Hi, everyone. Thanks all for coming. I'm Ivan Mikushin, and I work for VMware currently. Um, so who am I? Uh, I'm staff engineer at VMware. Uh, as of a few days uh, ago, recognized contributor at the Bytecode Alliance. And I'm working on WASM GC support in the WASM tools as a side project. So what got me here? Mostly curiosity uh, and a friendly encouragement from, from a bunch of people. Um, so I've been watching uh, WebAssembly evolve since uh, 2018. Uh, haven't been doing much, uh, just playing around. And uh, so recently I got very interested in uh, zero knowledge cryptography. Uh, so uh, sorry for the sidetrack here. Um, so in zero knowledge cryptography, uh, an important concept is uh, verifiable computation. Um, to uh, enable that, um, uh, the computation is encoded in algeb uh, algebraic constraints and uh, sort of with, uh, with a language that defines um, arithmetic circuits implementing the, the computation. These are very hard to use and uh, it's very easy to create bugs. Uh, for reference, there's a, a little blog post uh, from friends of mine um, uh, talking about this. So uh, a little example. So here's a, a little example in the language that defines a, um, a little arithmetic circuit. We have an input, an output, and uh, a variable defining an array. And we're trying to uh, get out a value from an array uh, depending on what came in, in the input. Uh, this, of course, results in an error, which is quite cryptic. Uh, the error reads non-quadratic constraint was detected st statically using unknown index uh, will cause the constraint to be non-quadratic. Uh, this, of course, is uh, non-legible, and she'd rather look at WebAssembly text format. Um, so anyway, um, what I'd ideally love to, to, to have is general purpose verifiable compute, where any program execution could be provable, not just the ones defined in a circuit language. Um, that would be uh, ideally in one language, uh, uh, admittedly a lower level one, uh, WASM, as we're here in, at WASMCon, and just have everything compiled to WASM, right? Well, there's a little problem that most languages uh, require garbage collection. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see this uh, leans nicely into our to-do item, why should I care? Uh, because the talk is named, uh, what is WASMGC and why should I care? So why I care personally? Uh, well, most la popular programming languages will be compiled to WASM, as I predict, and they require garbage collection. Um, so an empirical law that says what can be done in JavaScript will be done in JavaScript, uh, I predict will soon read what can be compiled to WASM will be compiled to WASM. Um, but that, of course, uh, meets a little problem that most languages that people use, uh, I mean, uh, we all use other languages, but uh, most developers out there use Java, JavaScript, Python, Go, and um, many more languages that all require garbage collection. So uh, that leans into our next to the item is what is WASM GC? where GC is required by all these languages. So well, uh, GC is of course garbage collection as per Wikipedia, a form of automatic memory management. Um, a garbage collector attempts to reclaim allocated memory that is no longer referenced. And it was invented in 1959 uh, by John, McCar uh, John McCarthy to simplify memory management in Lisp. Uh, which, by the way, is my favorite language. Um, so what is WASMGC? 
uh, we see this URL here. It uh, points to the proposal to add garbage collection support uh, to WebAssembly. Uh, and I'll touch a little bit about what WASMGC is not. So it is not a garbage collector specification. Um, a um, personal story, uh, when starting to work on this, I, was, uh, I dreaded that I'd be and excited, I'd, I'd be working on something like a concurrent mark, mark and sweep. Uh, not the case. Uh, because actually web-based runtimes already have high-performance GCs. Uh, and, and there are high-performance GCs available at uh, service side. We just need to use them. So what we do need is uh, we, think we need to add heap types to make use of that. And uh, what also is explicitly a non-goal, uh, which is tackled by uh, uh, the component model, by the way, uh, is seamless interoperability between multiple languages. So what is WASMGC? Um, well, WASMGC is a bunch of new types and uh, a bunch of new instructions. Uh, we are adding new heap types and uh, there are about 30 new instructions uh, that get added to, to the specification. Okay, let's uh, talk. The, the, the specification, the, the proposal is uh, divided into MVP and post MVP. And uh, specifically, the MVP talks about reference types, uh, heap types, subtypes, recursive types and the instructions, uh, while post-MVP, which we don't know, uh, will be implemented possibly in the future, uh, talks about things like type parameters, polymorphisms and generics, threads and shared references, weak references, a lot more. And um, we may or may not see all or some of these implemented. Okay, um, let's talk about the current scope. Uh, so, uh, heap types is the key to all of this. Okay, so what are the current uh, kinds of memory available in WASM? Well, uh, mostly people talk about linear memory, uh, but I say there's stack uh, that we use while, uh, when calling things. And there are, of course, even explicit uh, instructions in WASM to, uh, to, to work with stack. Uh, there's linear memory, of course, and heap, finally, that is added with uh, garbage collection. So heap, uh, what is it? It is a pool of memory used to fulfill uh, memory allocation requests uh, by Wikipedia. And here we see a picture of a fully allocated heap. Uh, um, so, uh, there are three disjoint hierarchies of heap types in WebAssembly. Uh, we have functional types, uh, external types, and aggregate types. So, uh, the things that are being added to, uh, to the specification is aggregate types, dynamically allocated managed data. So, here we see uh, the type hierarchy here. So, um, so of course, uh, func and extern types have been added by uh, previous proposals, reference uh, functions and, uh, so reference types and function references. Uh, so uh, everything else here is, is added by WASMGC. And the picture is uh, courtesy of um, a spec for prototype implementation in uh, Chromium. Uh, so let's talk about index types. So here in, in the first listing in a WebAssembly text notation, we see two tab types added, uh, type A and type B. The first one is a struct, uh, the second one is an array. Uh, we can probably see uh, they are, uh, the, the struct adds, uh, defines two fields. One is mutable 32-bit uh, integer. Uh, second is not mutable 64-bit uh, integer. Um, and type B is an array of mutable 32-bit integers. 
And the uh, second listing here uh, shows how this looks in something like Go. Um, so reference types. Uh, well, of course, heap types are not used directly. They are used as uh, references. And again, we, we see a, a very simple type uh, defined here. And we see two references uh, using that type. Um, so first is uh, as a parameter to function F1. Uh, it's a nullable reference. And the second is a non-nullable reference uh, to the same type as a result of function two. Again, the second listing uh, shows us how this looks in something like Go. Uh, and a bunch of shorthands. Uh, so uh, these shorthands are added um, so that mm, actually every short, uh, shorthand here is, is a, a bytecode uh, itself. So uh, we don't need to write uh, ref null func, we can say func ref instead. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, note that for uh, ref null none and ref null no extern and ref null no func, we, we use uh, these names starting from with null. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's see what next. Uh, and we, we also have this little funny type here, i31ref, which is, which is something called unboxed scalar. Um, all right. So I promised to talk about uh, a ways to define new types, uh, and this obviously is subtyping. So uh, type A is simply an index type uh, that, um, that is a struct. Uh, here, we were omitting any fields uh, for the sake of uh, showing the uh, subtyping hierarchy. And uh, the second listing here uh, is, is a, a source code in Java that would compile into something like this uh, in, in the WebAssembly format above. So uh, class B extends A, and we have a final class C uh, that extends A as well. So, and, uh, one of the most interesting thing uh, here is recursive type groups. So we, we see um, an example of that. And um, what, what it means is that uh, types that uh, comprise the, uh, the recursive type group are allowed to refer to uh, other types in the, in, in the type group, um, even if they are, uh, if their index is, is larger than, than uh, their index. For example, so we see here type A, and it has uh, a reference to, uh, an Alba reference to, to the type B. So uh, normally, this would not be allowed. Uh, so, so what we, we see here in, in type B, this is uh, what we could see everywhere else uh, when, when referring to, to different types. Uh, but uh, without the recursive type group, type A would, would not be possible. And uh, yeah, again, we'll look at the source code of something that would compile to something like that. Uh, and this time again in, in Go, uh, we can easily see uh, what what this uh, what code translates to this this kind of web assembly? Um, okay. So uh, there are thirty about thirty new instructions added to to the uh, specification, and uh, they group around uh, the types of objects, obviously. So we see some instructions manipulating unbox scalars, uh, creating and manipulating arrays and structs, um, uh, casting and testing values of reference types, and con conditional branching depending uh, on values of reference types and external reference conversions. Um, all right, so that is uh, 
the, uh, uh, in a nutshell, what uh, WASM-GC is. And um, before we finish, uh, is uh, I want to make a little prediction. We will see compilers to WebAssembly with garbage collection support uh, coming. And uh, we'll see these for uh, very popular languages uh, coming up pretty soon. Um, there are a bunch of uh, projects out there, uh, like GraalVM. And uh, it's, uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, these, uh, and GraalVM already supports uh, WebAssembly so, uh, as, as its input language. Uh, and uh, GraalVM, of course, also uh, compiles to native images. Uh, we just need to see uh, WASM as a native image format. Uh, and uh, this will add support for uh, Java and JVM-based languages as long as uh, Python and Ruby uh, um, very, very soon. So, um, and, but I actually think that Go will uh, be the first uh, because the uh, pace of development in, in that ecosystem is, is pretty uh, astounding. So uh, I would say Go will probably be the first garbage collection, collected languages um, that has, that compiles to WASMGC. We'll see. So I should also point out uh, the, uh, that there is uh, an um, editor's draft of uh, WebAssembly specification, uh, basically the release 2.0 uh, with added tail calls and function references and GC proposals. Uh, it's not the official draft, but is an editor's draft. Uh, you see the URL here. Uh, and Last time I checked, it was the beginning of August. Uh, this, this time is uh, pretty much the end of August. Uh, so this gets uh, uh, very uh, quick development. Um, so another resource I, I want to point out is contributing to WASM time. Um, actually, to be able to contribute to WASM time, it's uh, not much more than what is written in, in that uh, documentation he here. And uh, if you go and uh, start uh, talking to people on uh, Bytecode Alliance Zulip, uh, like they are very friendly people, and um, it's it's very easy to to get started contributing. And there's a lot of things that need to be done. In uh, for example, in this web page here, uh, there's a bunch of WASI proposals that that need implementation, uh, so yeah. And uh, with this, I want to thank you. Uh, I am I'm a cushion on all the socials, and I want to extend special thanks to Nick Fitzgerald uh, of Fastly, uh, Daniel Lopez, ex-VMware, and uh, David Wong of ZK Security. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, I guess we have a ton of time for questions. Uh, go ahead. Is, is there going to be a component? Yes, uh, good question. So, uh, so these types, if we look at, for example, like, I don't know, let's, let's look at uh, something like a struct or array, right? So, um, so these, uh, that's actually why the talk is uh, called what is uh, WASMGC, right? It does not specify garbage collector. Uh, it does not specify how these, uh, uh, how the data expressed in, this, in, in these data types going to be garbage collected. But uh, so, so basically the garbage collector is, ex is an implicit here, um, but you do need uh, these data types to, to kind of place the data on the heap, right? 
So we're talking about uh, the third type of memory here. So before uh, WASM GC, there are only two types of memory, stack and linear memory. So stack you use for calling functions, linear memory to you know, manipulate bytes uh, and, and maybe share between modules. So uh, before that, um, before adding the heap, we, we, uh, we didn't have that. So the heap is something that uh, the runtime uses, to, like the runtime controls the, the memory, the, the pile of memory that is called the heap. And uh, when you use something like a, an array or something like a struct in, in, these, uh, in these data types, the, th this data is placed on the heap. And then uh, when that data is no longer referenced, it's magically gone. So uh, the heap kind of gives you an illusion of infinite memory when in fact it is not. And this is the job of the garbage collector uh, to ensure that. Please. Unfortunately, I cannot. I, I am very curious about that myself, uh, and I intend to, to learn more uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, yeah, so, so I did have a chat uh, with a person who works on WASI, and he said, like, look, we first need to have the stuff work in, in baseline WASM, right, implemented in, in runtimes, and then we can talk about adding it to the component model, which is fair, I think. Please. Would the sysplot be checked if I put a function before trying to call it? Because currently, with a call indirect, if, if I did wrong, it's trapped, and there's no way to like, check it that it's the right time? So, uh, I believe so. So, uh, here we're looking at two functions, right? And um, I guess before you can uh, call any of these, uh, the validator has now all the information, uh, like actually even before executing your module, the validator has the information to say, hey, you cannot call this now. So this is like, like you know, I can like do a table jet and then a down cast or branch or something? There's like a down cast or branch instruction to use this? Uh, I'm, I'm blanking on this, unfortunately. Uh, maybe there, there are people in the audience who can, who can Please. Can you elaborate on how uh, I31 works? Oh, for sure. So, uh, yeah, uh, I31 is called an unboxed reference. Um, so the reference itself is a number, right? So uh, to address uh, a, a memory cell or, or, or a part of a heap, we use, uh, well, WebAssembly uses 32-bit uh, integers. Uh, we can take out one bit from the reference and say, hey, it's, uh, actually, we were using the other, uh, the, the remaining 31 bits for actually a number, and that would be your uh, unboxed scalar. So, uh, so is that an address in the memory? It's not an address. So that first bit would, would flag that, hey, this is not actually an address in the heap. It's just a number. number. This is a 31-bit number instead of a 32-bit number. Well, you could you could use it for uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs>
Cool, thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Please. So a garbage collection is a form of automatic memory management, right? Yeah. So, so uh, like in Rust, uh, we actually uh, do not um, use automatic memory management. Uh, in Rust, uh, you use something like uh, borrow checker. Uh, it's the job of the compiler to make sure that what gets allocated, uh, what, what gets borrowed uh, is returned, right? So. Uh, like in, in garbage collection, in, in uh, languages like Java or JavaScript, uh, this is not the case. Uh, there's no borrow checker. So uh, uh, heap is used all the time. So uh, objects are allocated left and right, and then they're just dropped, like, I mean, forgotten. So what to do about that is garbage collection. So that's the... Uh, so that's why, that's why we uh, explicitly use the heap for that, and we let we, we, we by using the heap, we we'll let the, the runtime know, hey, these the, these references need need to be uh, managed, and when uh, there are no where's no no path from the root, then they need to be collected. So uh, I guess different languages, different models, and and there are a lot of languages that do require, unfortunately, garbage collection. Please. So, there's going to be a new type of memory arrive in which all the rubbish collected objects live. Yes. That breaks down the linear memory. Yes. Is, is there any like, guidelines on how this should be one or the other? Uh, like, say, if you can also like, should go to all of its rubbish collected, basically all of its memory in the GP area, like, what would it be the linear memory for? A great question. Um, so I guess if the compiler knows exactly what to do with the memory, uh, like in, in, in the case of Rust, uh, then for sure use the linear memory. Uh, but then for those languages where uh, you don't know, uh, like there's no kind of deallocate instruction, right? Uh, then just use, use the heap. So, and, and that will be the uh, predominant use case for, uh, for these uh, languages, uh, these most popular languages here. So, so yeah, Java also uh, has linear memory. It's funny that Java al always had the heap and garbage collection, but uh, it only added linear memory like very recently, right? And uh, WebAssembly first it, linear memory was the only one that it had, and it's not now adding garbage collection. I guess we need all, all of them. Yeah, please. So, so it is not here today uh, in terms of compiler support. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, so. The uh, WASM GC support is being added actively. And uh, like, for example, I am not sure if it already has been added to, uh, to Chrome, to, to the V8 uh, engine, because this comes from, from the Chromium project. Uh, and uh, the document where this is from is kind of final now. So I guess it's implemented in, in there already. Um, and uh, this, uh, this, uh, the WASM GC support is coming to WASM time um, soon. Um, so I'm, I'm working on WASM tools uh, to enable that. And uh, uh, there are people here who are also working on adding the support to, uh, to WASM time runtime directly. So we definitely will see this in, in a matter of months. Actually, uh, I know of a project uh, that will probably give you uh, uh, 
the ability to use uh, this technology uh, as soon as it's available. Uh, I think it's, it would be Kotlin. So if you code in Kotlin, uh, then you'll probably get uh, support for this as soon as it's available. Yep. All right, we are, uh, I think we are at time. Uh, and uh, I'm excited you're here, and uh, thank you so much for coming. <laughs>